Welcome to Stars Mata. And brushing up your game. All right, awesome. So we are here with a, a series we started a long, long time ago. Wait, that's the wrong, uh, the wrong universe, the wrong, uh, wrong star. Uh, There'll be a little bit of a callback, though. Yeah, <laughs> well, we started it a while back, uh, where we take a, a bit of a. Uh, I just think it. I think I mean, this is a fun look at the factions, but also a meaningful look at factions and uh, what they bring to the game, how to play them, how to play against them, uh, things you might want to buy from the faction, and then we kind of just do a kind of random top five of something. In this case, we're looking at the top five Romulan tech you might want to run. Yeah. Yes, so uh, we sort of have a, a loose format to these episodes. Um, and it typically starts with uh, the identity of the faction. And uh, in my opinion, the Romulans definitely had a very strong identity at the start of the game. But it kind of feels like that identity wasn't improved throughout it. And that would be Romulans were your de facto tanks. Mm. Their ships had the most health. They were in the first kit that you bought. Um, they had cloaking, but even if they were cloaked, their hull was still incredibly high. And the trade-off that they were given was three attack dice. But that kind of just stayed that way. <laughs> yeah, so, right, the first Deridics, the it was the Kazara, right? Kazara. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, it, the Kazara, a three, two, six, four, three attack, two defense dice, six hull, four shields, and just simple named ability. If you initiate an attack while you're cloaked, you get an extra attack die. So, like, you know, you're absolutely right. Very, very defensive. Typically not going to die in one attack coming at it. And a very uh, straightforward ability where you get a little something else because you're cloaked. I, <clears throat> I actually want to say that to me was probably where the Romulan abilities kept in. Yes, they, they were tanky. Absolutely. I, I'm not going to argue that, but I think they had just a tiny bit more of an identity where they would do something if they were cloaked. Yeah. You, you do definitely get a lot of um, cloaked base abilities and the best, the best Romulan ships all have to do with cloaked abilities, and the worst Romulan ships have to do with cloaked abilities. Uh huh. Um, well, <laughs> the worst ones might have to do with like uh, taking damage. And... Yeah, but the Praetis takes damage, and it also has to do with being cloaked. Yeah. So, <laughs> or like the Azure. <laughs> That's it, it's the ultimate worst <laughs> Klingon uh, Rom. It would be a bad Klingon ship because it's not even a Klingon ship. Ah, yeah. it, it's it's one of the worst Romulans in my opinion. <laughs> And, you know, I, I have uh, Utopia up with, like, all the Romulan ships. And a lot of them actually have these nice ways of getting an extra attack die. That's another theme that comes through in Romulans. Which I think is just speaking to Romulans don't get enough attack dice. That is, yeah, it's the problem. It's like they said, you know what, I'm going to take all the defense dice... You guys keep the attack dice. Well, and, you know, I, I've been like, rewatching Next Generation. The Romulans were a threat. They were the. Yeah, that, they, they were on par with the Enterprise D from a, a toe yeah. to toe standpoint. And, yeah, you just don't. Yeah. You didn't want to go to, to war, to combat with a Romulan Dideridix. Yeah, it was supposed to be the equivalent of like the 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 galaxy class and the uh, the the, the Daredex was supposed to be like you know this was the equivalent of the U.S. and the USSR mm -hmm. showing off their nuclear armament. It was yeah, when a galaxy class pulls up to a dispute and a Daredex pulls up to the dispute, you know there isn't actually going to be a battle because none of these ships want to actually fire on each other. Right, and it's the moment when Romulans pull up a second to Daredex that's when you're in trouble. Um, and then, and I, again, because if you go back to the start of 
Star Trek Attack, when, when the game's balance was a lot more simplified, that kind of rang true. If you had one to Daredex and one Galaxy class with no upgrades, they were kind of on par. Mm-hmm. And even now, if you take a generic to Daredex and a generic Galaxy class, they both have discounts. I think they're still technically balanced against each other, but nothing else about the faction holds that same balance. Yeah. It, it feels... It's like it's only the Dedaridex and the Galaxy class that have remained balanced with each other, and that might have to do with the fact that we've gotten so few Galaxy class ships. Um, if we had more Galaxy class ships, um, then the the Dedaridexes would just fall to the wayside. Yeah, I, I think I'm with you there. Um, that being said, there are some really cool named abilities on Dedaridexes, especially the name oh. that we got. <laughs> There's also one that I love so much, and I never play it because it's just, I don't, I used to play it all the time. Um, here, PBW Tamal. I don't even know what the PBW stood for, but that was, I think, my favorite to Daredex ability. But yeah, I never see it being played. Um, that's the one where you, you can um, disable two enemy shields uh, in exchange for an auxiliary power token. That, I think, was by far my favorite. Okay. But there's so many out there. Like, if I just type in D comma D into Utopia here, there's so many to choose from. Um, even the Avatar of Tomed's ability isn't great, but it's still pretty cool. Um, but yeah, uh, like the Hakona. The Hakona was one that was ruled pre rule of three for sure. Absolutely, um, it was yeah. It, it's still pretty nice. I flew it in a mission the other day. Uh, and it was pretty fun to fly. I had like a couple science vessels flying alongside it. It was a. I was actually playing one of the old missions. So I just did a, a quick memory alpha search for what PWB stands for, and they don't have a direct answer, but there's a a thought that it could be Praetor's Warbird. Hmm. I see there's a couple pre-WBs in Utopia here. There's a, uh, a Ja Rimmer. Each time you attack, you may re-roll one of your attack dice for each damage guard assigned to your ship. Mm-hmm. That's one of, I don't mind that kind of ability on a six-hull ship. So like, right. That's all right. Pointless um, on like a three-hull. Yeah. Or I, th- I think there may have even been... No, I don't think I've seen that on a two-hull ship, but I've definitely seen it, I think, on a, a three-hull. Like yeah. Klingons. <laughs> Klingons. What's Twilight's Wrath? Klingons? We're Romulans today! We don't care about Klingons! <laughs> Unfortunately, they will come up when we bring up the swarm tactics for oh, yeah, these things. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, Twilight's Wrath, what was that one? I, I'm not That's familiar with that. That's the new one. Was that a booster? No, the oh. Twilight's Wrath ju- is just coming out here in the um, Tal Sh- Secrets of the Tal Shiar. Mm-hmm. So that's so why you look is, at it is... and you go, wait, wait a second! I don't remember you. You, you're actually good. After an opposing ship within range, one to three. I love one to three abilities. Oh, absolutely. Performs an action. If this ship is cloaked, you may perform an additional sensor echo as a free action. This round, place a power station token beside your ship. If that ship is a Dominion ship, you may do both. Ooh, this feels like a ship that you would want to run. Like, you wouldn't even need to put Lars on this ship to make it good. It does it itself. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's... Yeah. And Although it's it super hurt. thematic. Nothing it... hurts to put Lars on it. <laughs> no, <laughs> then you no. Get, you'd get a defensive and... battle station. You'd get... um, You'd already have your... You'd trigger his ability with the sensor echo. And you'd get the plus one die. So you'd be firing four dice. You'd have uh, two battle stations. That's something I really like about Lars. I think Lars is... The perfect example... I'm going to actually punch him into Utopia so people watching can know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, he is, I think, the best example of a well-balanced... Uh, like, a well-designed card. Because there was a... Er, like, when I joined up with the game, I saw a lot of expansions that had cards whose purpose was, like, oh, it costs five extra if you put it on the wrong ship or this card only works on this specific ship and i i kept thinking like why don't you just make a card that works super great on that ship but can be used on others and lars is a great example of that because 
to me, he works best on the IRW Talon, the ship he was supposed to be put on. But he has no restrictions related to the Talon. You can put him on any ship, and he's great on any like cloaking ship, but he's best on the Talon. Although with some of these new ships, he might even be better on them. But like when he came out, it was like you wanted to put him on the Talon, but you were free to put him on anything else. Yeah. And he would make everything good. Some of the newer Romulan cards are kind of doing that, but they're still doing it artificially, where it's like they're adding points or various other restrictions in order to make them better on some ships. Lars, though, is perfect because he works great on his ship because he was designed for his ship. And, and that's a really good point. It's a lot of what I think has happened with Romulans as a as a total, as, as a sum, is that they have had interesting cards given to them, but they've been very restricted. And, and I think that actually speaks to who Romulans are as a society that we see in Next Generation. And granted, we don't get to see a lot of them, but they're very fragmented. This side doesn't want to talk to that side. The tall Shi'ar looms over everything. They don't tend to cooperate very much. That is a good point. And, and I have to so say, one th- it, it, it does make sense that, that we get these restrictions and this, this can only go on this class. This costs more to move over here. We don't want to play with Klingons and, and all of that. So, I, I don't know. I... I, I it hurts from a gameplay me- mechanic, a gameplay standpoint, but I love the thematicism that it's brought. Yeah. Anyway, that that's my my thinking of what Romulans bring to the game is is some awesome tech, some awesome uh, captains, some some pretty cool defensive shenanigans, awesome cloaking, and uh, some cool secrets that we'll we'll be able to get into. Okay, so that I would say covers their identity pretty well. Yeah. Um, they're also, um, I guess, one the sort of overlap between this point and our next point. Uh, our next point being, uh, how do you build for them? Is I would say their strongest suit at the moment, along with tech, of course, is their movement capabilities, and that certainly appears to be where the Tal Shiar pack is leaning. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, and I... So, okay. All right, here we it, go. It, it's this idea of... So you want to be a good Romulan player. What do you need? What do you need to be able to do? And I think the number one thing you need to be able to do is play a good movement game. You need to be able to picture where ships can get advantageous firing positions, not just this round, but one, two, three rounds ahead. That's really the key to playing Romulans well. Because of things like sensor echoes and now with the bank echoes that exists and abilities that are out there, you have to make a lot of informed decisions. Romulans are not a casual first-time players game. It's not the it, faction for those people. It, yeah, it's they aren't easy to master. Mm-mm. Like, if you're a casual player, by all means, you can play Romulan. Oh, it's absolutely. just if you're a casual player playing Romulan, don't expect to win. Um, that no yeah. offense, but um, it's they are they are a difficult to master, and I would say one of the most important skills to have as a Romulan player is know how to build to like point efficiency, because one thing that's part of the oop I accidentally killed the Romulan filter on here, so now board cards are appearing. Ah, no, the Romulans <laughs> um, have been assimilated. Yes, there there is the uh, Avatar of Tomed. I do like that ship so much. Yes. But um, what was I saying? Right. You need to build efficiently because Romulan ships, if you'll look here, are expensive. Um, yeah. They're expensive. Uh, I would say one of the things that they do well, though, is they do, I think, have more one-point crew cards than any other faction. 
I, I, I don't even own all I the Romulan ships. Say that. And I've got Yeah, I I don't even own all the Romulan ships and I have so many one point Romulan crew cards. Uh they have at least to my count six. Six one point crew. Mm-hmm. Actually, it, yeah, I can just bring them up here. And not used on top of that, they have eleven two point crew. Not saying they're all oh, useful, fuck. but they're at least they're at least playable. Now we should also say there are two copies of Param as one point crew, so really you have five one point crew that you can actually put on a ship. There's also a Borcha. We have two one point Borchas. Oh, okay, so four. Sorry. Um, but I think he's also uh is he a one point or a two point captain? I think he's a two point captain, Borcha. Uh, even worse. Um, <laughs> um but that being said, I think there's at least two of those that I would actually play in a game. Thay and, and Patach. Patach. Let's see. I think the those Yeah, are Thay both, is a go to. I think they're both playable one point cards. Thay fits on just about anything, and Patak, Patak, you got to um, build a little bit. But it's, it, it's an extra attack die. Thay's an extra cloak. Or, you know, keep your cloak. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah, Thay goes well, I think, in the same line as why Romulan Spy is good. Just yes. getting yourself a free scan. Uh-huh. Not scan. A free cloak is, is really useful. Yes. Um, but yeah, when it comes to building... Uh, the Romulans with the cost, they're they're definitely a faction of extremes because uh-huh. they're, let's see, you've got your, they have the cheapest ships in the game. So that would immediately think, oh yeah, they're great for swarms. Nope. And yeah, in a, hundred, in a 120 point game, you can run well over 12 Romulan science vessels. But the problem is they don't got any bite to them. Meaning that a Klingon swarm of four ships or six ships will still have the advantage because they have more attack dice. Uh But then if you try to build a swarm or a group of Dederodek ships, yes, you've got more durable ships than the Klingons, but your attack dice are so weak that the Klingons still have the advantage. So, like, a Romulan swarm is kind of... I don't even know if it's really that doable. However, you might be able to do it with Romulan D7s. Oof. So, okay, while possible, here's, here's <laughs> my challenge with it. D7s have, have kind of two things working against them. One, they only have a uh, forward 90 arc. Um, secondly, while the Talon is a great ship, and it is absolutely it is i i will uh i still look to find uh ways of playing that that talent the algeron the algeron is and, just a terrible ship that's that's the other named d7 yeah flowers for algeron uh when attacking with your primary weapon if your ship is not cloaked during the declare target step you may perform a one maneuver before choosing an enemy to attack. that doesn't seem that bad okay it's like it's i i like to oh 18 points yeah that's not and great. and there's been weird rulings about how it works and i don't want to hash that out um cool ignorance is bliss for the casual player yes absolutely i'm not going to tell you about shuttlecraft rule changes no i'm gonna I, let you live in happiness yeah uh. no i will say the <laughs> d7 actually has a very nice maneuver dial I think it's comparable uh, to the Brel. Um, so we can go yeah, toe-to-toe it, toe with the Brel for movement. Actually, I think the D7 might be... Does the D7 have Valdor turns? Uh, um, two and three turns. I need to pull up a Brel here. Yeah. I, I set up my thing so it doesn't actually show you the movement cards. Okay. But um, I'm Pulling up a yeah, Brel. I think it, and speaking of that, we should probably tell the audience what we mean by Valdor turns. That was the... I think the, that... That was kind of the language I heard for a while when I first joined, was um, talk about, you know, the Valdor turns. Uh, what that means is the 
your one straight, one banks, two straight, and two banks are all green. And it makes like a nice little rectangle on your, your movement card. Yes. Okay. So, yes. The... the it does Romulan have Valdor D7 turns. has the, the Valdors. The one, one and two straight banks are green. Whereas the Borel, yeah, it's right. one, two straight, and one banks are green. So it's a little nicer. But your only red maneuver is your three come about. I, I, and uh, sure, the difference is your Borels are getting four attack dice. Yeah, but um, there are there are ways around that with the Romulans. There um, there are a couple Denatra. weapons which pretty much only give you. Oh yeah, Denatra. She's she's the one Romulan card you'll see everywhere in the the current meta uh-huh. online. The current online Fermount meta has Denatra in like almost every fleet. And she only um, got better. Yes, she's getting better. And I was like, out of all the cards that the Romulans could have been improved. I almost feel bad that they chose to improve Denatra because it's like, she was already so great. You didn't need to make her better. There's so many captains and things you could have made better, and you chose to make the good card even better. Uh... Well, why not? (laughs) Oh, the D7s do have that Disruptor Blast weapon, which is nice for three points. Yeah. But at that point, you're now pushing it more expensive than a Burrell. Um... Sure. Well, yeah, let's look up Denatra. Mm. Denatra. Here we go. So, pretty much the same, just with a bonus. Uh, if the friendly ship is a Valdor or a Sovereign class, they get a blank into a... They can convert a blank into a hit. Mm-hmm. So... She is pretty much the same. She just works a bit better in, like, thematic play. Yes. And I think this was something you brought up in your video. It looks like they're kind of rewarding thematic play now. Which which I'm completely here for. It's, you know... I, well, okay. <laughs> I... I know he didn't like P4, but, like, to me, I love him. <laughs> no, so... so oh, he's is... not. he's not Romulan. He's just in the pack. My bad. Okay. Um, well, B four is Romulan independent, but it's. <laughs> I don't think he's Romulan independent. I think he's just independent. Let me see, because he's not coming up on on Utopia as Romulan. Oh, I see him as both. But oh, do I? Do I? How, how is his name spelt? I thought it was just B four. B hyphen four. Oh, that's why he's not coming up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, so... Okay, there some cards are objectively bad. Or confusing to use or aren't good yet. Yes, um, those are cards that in my system I rank as zero in my one to seven. My very complicated system no one understands. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> hey, it works, right? And, and, yeah. And like when I look at a card, if I'm confused by it and I don't have a means of playing it yet, that doesn't mean it's impossible to use. I, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna sit there and trash a card. I from trying to design stuff for this game and other games, I know how difficult it can be. I give the design team a lot of credit because it is very difficult to try to encapsulate the the feel of these cards. I think what they've done better in the last several waves of packs, even going back to like the Ferengi and the animated series, the Kelvin packs, is they've they put in very thematic cards that also work well in gameplay design. I mean, Gold Press Latinum was an entire mechanic that was thematic. Absolutely. And worked very well. And, and with the wrong When I introduced have... it to my player... Sorry, keep going. Yeah, when I introduced it to my players... Uh, my small little group here, um, they're like, oh, it's just cheating. I'm like, yeah, pretty much. Pretty You're much. paying to break the rules. But that's what the Ferengi do. They <laughs> they cheat. Um, but yeah, to talk about the Romulans and how to keep uh, <laughs> how to keep playing them, it's the the Romulans have their shenanigans. They have things that cloak they have you know we're talking about trying to swarm with them i don't think 
I don't think a swarm ever truly works. Um, yeah, not not with Romulans. It's it's not their thing. But I think Denatra is one of those key pieces, and Denatra comes from the end of our timeline, at least in published Attack Wing stuff, um, where Denatra sh- starts to show the bits of cooperation. And I'm going to shoot myself in the foot here a little bit, but I think Denatra starts to show, hey, there's room for outside of Romulan cooperation. I'm not, you know, yes. I'm, I'm not saying go complete faction mixing craziness. Uh, while I do enjoy that, I'm not saying you got to do that, but I am saying, hey, we saw a Romulan cooperate with the Federation bring Denatra on a Romulan ship, have a Federation ship in your fleet. It can work. See, um, I think it is the Cardassian Union faction pack has captains which are designed to work alongside the Romulans as well. Uh-huh. And there's a little bit of of that in here, um, in the new pack. What was it? I think it was... It was the, uh, the Dideridex, which I didn't recognize the name of. The Twilight one. Yeah. That one is is themed around fighting the Dominion. It is, but that was from an episode where the the Cardassians were working with the Romulans, and there are Cardassians from the. Uh, let's see if I can look it up here from the Cardassian Union pack. That have um, that have abilities that synergize with Romulans. In fact, there's a whole ship that synergizes with Romulans. Right, so while while you're doing that, I'll talk a little bit more about maybe my philosophy with ship selection and Romulans. Uh, 